YouTube Model Railroad fans. Welcome to the Santa Ana Industrial Lead layout update. This will be uh, mostly a construction, layout construction update. I also uh, finished my, just about finished locomotive 1105 here. So I was going to show you that too. Remember, if you enjoy this content, leave a like and a comment below. Also, you can subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when there is new content available. You can also check out my community tab where I periodically post photos of progress and projects I'm working on. So why don't we start with 1105 here. Uh, I've been working on it for a few weeks. Um, it, it, it was on this uh, the Santa Ana Industrial Lead. I saw some pictures and videos of it uh, probably last year, but um, I haven't seen it on any any recent one, so it might have moved on to somewhere else. I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, I really liked how the graffiti and uh, everything looked on it, so I wanted to model it. Uh, this was a Walders Proto 2000, I believe it was, or row number 2000. Um, so I took off the 2000 and redecaled it 1105. Uh, I added the baby wings to the front. Uh, I added working ditch lights front and back. Uh, there's the 1105 there. Um, <clears throat> the graffiti was done with Posca pens. Um, there's a little uh, panel line weathering to start. Um, and then a kind of a dirt dust fade. Then I put the graffiti on. Um, and the blue graffiti there, I uh, actually redid, re-went over it to get it to look newer because on the prototype you can see it over here just looks a little newer than the other stuff and even on the pictures I saw the KMR and the uh, look at the once um, before I saw this other one I don't even know what the letters are in this one but so anyway I think it came out pretty good um, I just noticed on the picture that this little oops this little part here is is yellow which I'll have to paint but for the most part she's done um, she's kind of kind of has a glossy sheen on the picture so it's a fairly new paint job one thing I did notice was that when Union Pacific redoes these paint jobs it appears that the letters are closer together because looking at I was trying to compare the graffiti to what letter it was on and it just doesn't match up to the picture so I think at some point they kind of um, condense their lettering so I was just using the little uh, like rivets and stuff to see where the, the graffiti went when I drew it on there with pencil and then kind of traced over with pens so anyway that's 11.05 instruction update time why don't we walk into the layout room and see what I've been doing the last uh, week or so as you can see I've been pretty busy I have about a third of the bench work done, maybe. Let's take a walk through here. So we're going to start here at Coyote Creek, but real quick, just to give you a quick overview on the type of bench work I am building. I'm using the IKEA Ivar uh, shelf system from IKEA. Um, you can buy the shelves and the legs separately or together. They have all kinds of different parts that you could add on to them. Uh, I actually have a desk uh, portion I'll be putting on the island to have my workbench there. We'll see how that works out, I guess. But um, uh, the first thing I had to do was uh, make this canal slash creek deeper. Um, it was too shallow before, and then before I could do anything else, I had to dig out the cabinet underneath here um, redo the bench work a little bit, lower it uh, about, a, it's about one and a half inches. And then I replaced the cabinet with the shelving unit below it. So that was the first thing I did. And then I, from there, I could just move on and do, do the new part of the layout. So um, I'm using one by twos open grid um, framing for the bench work. I'll put quarter inch plywood on top um, and then two inch foam on top of that. Um, 
I do have a kind of a deep section over there where we cross the highway at the very end in the corner. I'll show you in a second. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty flat. Um, I'll probably dig out a few ditches and some uh, contours near some of the tracks in some areas more than I did on the on the first part of the layout. I didn't really do that at all over over on the early the first half of the layout. So here we go. Um, right here will be uh, forest plywood, um, just a flat of it really, and just, but it'll still exist at least. Um, and then down here is where the yard starts. Um, you can see, there's three tracks. Um, and the main will go past it as well. I'll flash in the uh, layout diagram. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's pretty uh, pretty solid. That's just one of the shelving units. So this is where the uh, big bridge over the I-5 will be. It's, it's going to be about a two-foot highway here. Um, probably back to the corner and then here. Um, there's a picture of it. It's pretty big. I think there's like 16 or 18 lanes. You count all the HOV and everything but I think I can get 13 something like that and then it's interesting it's got the uh, oops, get over here. It's kind of sloping hill that I'll have to build in uh, the brick wall there and this whole thing will just be scratch built figure out how to do it yet not sure so moving along here this is gonna be the street running area sorry about the lighting I have uh, lights on order but so this, this whole little 13 foot section is just one track, some houses, um, but it'll look cool. And this is where we turn. To hit our first industry uh, international paper. Be here and there'll also be a backdrop up there separating the other side of the layout. And then we'll turn the corner here and go up this way oops this is where it gets uh, pretty tight up here i think about 30 inches here and then up down to 28 i think up there by the table but right here will be the plastics transload uh, transload area and uh crenshaw lumber somewhere around here and that's about as far as i've gotten so far still uh Still, uh, kind of did the easy parts, easy part, I guess, where everything's connected to the wall and now I got to build this island. So I'm kind of laying out where the uh, shelves and things will go to, uh, to give it some actual bracing, some weight, um, deciding if I want to put two by fours on the floor or not. I don't know. I can't, I'm not going to go into the cement or anything on the floor, but so that's where I'm at. Hopefully. In the next week or so, I'll have it all done, I think, the, at least the bench work. Maybe next by next weekend, I'm hoping. Anyway, another thing I, uh, I'm doing with the bench work is I'm doing pocket hole joinery for the uh, these cross members onto the this uh, piece on the wall here. Um, so that way I could put, I put this piece up level here where I want it, 40, I think it's 46 inches or something like that. And then I could drill, I have the jig to drill the holes out and then you just go straight in with the, uh, the two screws and it's, it's easy to take apart, easy to put back together. Um, it's very convenient. Um, on the old half, I did it also on this half or this side, but now I'm just uh, kind of countersinking uh, a dr drill in it and then countersinking it and then just putting in a regular screw um, so it's flush with so the fascia would be flush here so I just wanted to uh, I think I've had some comments on some pictures about what I was doing <clears throat> so 
Here's the jig down here. It's a Craig. There's plenty of videos online. On it. it's, it's very, very handy, for sure.